so I don't think we have a quorum here, but we have to uh, do a democratic exercise. I couldn't get a competent tutor willing to mark your homeworks. I'm sure you are terribly unhappy about that. Uh, so we have to change the marking policy, and I had several requests to bring back the major project. So I propose that uh, instead of the midterm and the homeworks, you have 50% a major project and 50% final. How does this sound? <coughs> Who uh, prefers this to the previous uh, marking schema with the midterm, in plus midterm rather than project? Uh, Okay, who is unhappy about that? Huh? One person is unhappy. Can I ask you why you are unhappy? Uh, you mean unhappy about the 50% uh, Sorry? You mean unhappy about the 50% project? Because? because uh, it just seems like a lot of work to do. In the middle of rather be spread out. Well, you can start working on your project uh, straight away, right? Uh, yes. Sorry? Okay, so for the major project, as we did it in past years, uh, you choose your topic in consultation with me, and the only requirement is that it has significant uh, algorithmic component. Uh, but it can be implementation of a fancy algorithm, it can be improving. Uh, tweaking some of the algorithms that we are going to do and similar, but kind of hands-on approach. Uh, but it would be up to, of course I can propose some topics as I will, but uh, it would be up to you to choose the, the, the topic. Something that really interests you, because I don't want it to be a project just to satisfy the requirement of the class because life is too short for that. <laughs> so you want something that you're really passionate about. And in the past years, I had probably five or six papers published by students on, essentially based on their projects. And you can find them on the website, including about page rank application to security. Uh, so uh, there is one and a half a person Mm, so what shall we do it? Yes. What's the structure of the final thing? Okay, that's a good question. The final will be just like three one to one. I'm going to assign homeworks, but there will be uh, there are a hundred students in class, so <coughs> it's not. I I couldn't get a tutor to to mark it, but it would be uh, slight variations of the problems that you have a chance to work on as a homework. Is that in like a two-hour exam? Yes. Right, but it will be something that, in fact, I just released homework number one. Uh, it's available on the web page. Uh, so um, you can get an idea of what you are expected. Uh, to be able to do. Uh, so let's see how many, so what, only one person is happy about uh, more people. Yes? Uh, I'm talking like, let's say we get things, Sorry? I just missed the very start. Uh, so the, you see, I couldn't get a tutor who is competent enough and willing, right? Because the high flyers in the school tend to be celebrities and don't like to work very hard, shall we say. <laughs> so um, the, I can, I, instead of marking the homeworks, you can, I, I can discuss the homework problems with you, that's perfectly fine. But uh, instead of the midterm and the final, uh, I'm sorry, instead of the midterm and the homework, you would have uh, uh, a project 50% uh, and 50% final. So let's see what is the, uh, who likes the proposal? Okay, uh, and uh, one person dislikes it and most of the people, yeah, well then I guess we should just, I should just try harder to find someone. 
Yeah. You can work if it's substantial project, you can work in pairs. That's correct. But yeah, but uh, I, you know, it's kind of, I shouldn't be changing the marking policy after the, the, you know, after you sign up for the course, but I thought you would be more enthusiastic because I had a couple of emails asking to replace Peter with the project, but uh, then let's just keep it as is, uh, uh, since uh, there is no unanimous uh, UN decision on that topic. Uh, Okay, uh, so I'll just try to find, uh, maybe I can blackmail someone. <laughs> uh, okay, so, um, so everything stays as before. So uh, last time what we saw is uh, that uh, the page rank algorithm, actually the existence of the page rank, uh, uh, that satisfies uh, this fixed point property is actually a consequence of a much more general fact about Markov chains. So today we want to see a little bit more about Markov chains and uh, uh, some uh, more applications besides uh, the page rank because Markov chains uh, chains in, and especially something called hidden Markov models are extremely important in various disciplines uh, from speech recognition to um, <coughs> decoding uh, convolutional codes uh, in CDMA uh, to machine learning, right? So it's uh, really uh, a the algorithm is really one of the crucial algorithms uh, Day. So, uh, what is a, um, a Markov chain? Markov chain consists of a collection of states. Right? So, this is your collection of states. This is uh, uh, S1, S2, S3, all the way to uh, Sn. Um, you can think of uh, this just in terms of our preferred uh, uh, model, which is the page rank. In case of page rank, the states will be just the web pages, uh, right? Uh, <coughs> now, um, uh, Markov chain is uh, kind of so to speak, an evolutionary process, right? So uh, we have a discrete time, say t equals to zero, uh, then t equals to one, t equals to two, and then all the way somewhere here, uh, small t equals to some capital T. And we consider the states at each instant in time, right? So this is just another uh, copy of the states. Um, and similarly, for every other instant in time, <coughs> until when the evolution stops, right? Now, initially, uh, we have a probability distribution uh, which gives you the probability for the chain to start its evolution from that state, right? In the case of our random surfer, <coughs> what is the initial <coughs> probability of each state? Uh, it's uniform probability. Uh, so if, uh, uh, let's put S capital N here, uh, if, uh, so the probability is 1 over N, 1 over N, and so forth, right? Now, <coughs> the 
besides the set of states, uh, uh, Markov chain consists also of a type of a table, uh, right, of probabilities. Uh, so in entry ij gives you the probability that if uh, the state is uh, si, that in the next uh, step it will go to the, it will uh, assume state as j, right? So, in particular, for our mark of, for our page rank, right, we will have that uh, probabilities, uh, say this is S1 and this is S4, right? This probability, S1, S4, right, will be equal to, so probability S1 to uh, change into S4 will be equal to 1 over the number of outgoing links of uh, uh, S1 if the page uh, um, S1 has outgoing, uh, so S1 has uh, out, actually in the revised version of page rank it's alpha, right, uh, uh, times this, uh, okay, let me just be completely uh, precise. So it will be this, right, plus uh, 1 minus alpha uh, divided by n. If, uh, um, if uh, uh, S1 has a link to uh, S4, right? Else it will be just uh, 1 over n uh, otherwise, right? So, in our case of page rank, some probabilities will be strong, depending whether this web page has a link pointing to that web page, and some other probabilities will be weak, right? Uh, the other probabilities will be just one uh, over n, right? Now, if I have uh, any state, uh, what is the probability of the Markov chain that, uh, um, let's denote this, let me see what notation I used. Uh, what notation did I use? What is the probability? Uh, okay, uh, probability at uh, Um, I guess I will put it as a superscript. Uh, at t equals to 1, uh, the remark of chain is in state, a uh, uh, certain state as j. Um, what is this equal to? So here is my state as j. Yeah? Given the initial probability distribution, Right of, of probabilities to be a particular state. What will be, and ignore this, this is just for the page rank example, so that you can kind of visualize this easier. For us, this will be just a generic probability P S1, uh, S4. Uh, what is then the probability that after one step of evolution, right, that I end up and at the state as J. How can I get to state as J? Exactly. So it will be equal to the sum of um, 
probability when t equals to 0 to be in the state Si, right? Uh, times probability to change from state i into state Sj, and I have to sum up this for all i <coughs> equals from 1 up to capital M, right? Because the only way to end up at state Sj after what single step evolution of my Markov J is probability to be previously in a particular state Si times probability to make the appropriate transition, right? Are you with me? Right? So this will be simply sum of all these probabilities um, okay, so in this paper I wrote this, uh, so let's use uh, notation uh, Q, uh, Q uh, superscript T, uh, or say uh, superscript uh, uh, tau is the vector of probabilities when t equals to tau uh, to be in the state of uh, uh, S uh, J set here. And uh, when J goes uh, between 1 and uh, N. Right, so Q tau is the vector uh, of the probabilities after how many uh, steps. Okay, so um, th there is a more compact way uh, to write this formula, right? So th this would be for every j, we have one equality like this. Well, it's easy to see that this simply says uh, that Q Q1, uh, vector Q1 is equal to vector uh, Q0 uh, times, um, uh, times matrix G, where G is the matrix of transition probabilities of uh, transition. So this is a matrix of B. Uh, as I goes to, uh, sorry, B as I goes to S J over all I and J between one and N. Right? Because what are we doing here? If you imagine this vector Q zero of initial probabilities. Well, that's precisely what this does. The element at the Q place of the resulting uh, uh, row vector will be simply the product, right? You can just imagine it, uh, right? This is, say, place J. And then uh, if you multiply Q zero, with J, you will be multiplying probabilities in Q with the corresponding probability that from this state we move to the state J. So this will give you the, vector, the J component of the vector. So do you understand this? Ah. Right, so this is now uh, just, right, this sum is precisely what this, right, because what, what does it look like? It looks like this. This will be Q0 S1, Q0 S2, 
right? Up to Q0 S N, and then you multiply this, right? If you multiply with J column, here you will have a probability to go from state S1 into state Sj, probability to go from S2 into Sj, all the way to probability to go from Sn into state Sj. So when you multiply um, um, Q0 of Si, right, when you multiply this, you will be multiplying it precisely with this uh, entry here, Si into Sj, right, so this will multiply precisely this, and then, of course, you sum up everything, so you get precisely this expression. And if you continue the evolution of the Markov chain, uh, then, of course, for each subsequent state, so any state q t plus 1 uh, will be obtained from probability distribution of states at after t plus 1 many steps will be probability distribution over states at t times a matrix G, right? for exactly the same reason. But then we can combine all of these in a, all of these, yes? Wouldn't G change for every T? No, because that's an important fact. The probability of going from one state into another state does not change with respect to time. Which means that, for example, if I'm surfing the internet, my probability to go from one particular page to another particular page doesn't change with time because it will always be equal either <coughs> if there is a link, it's the probability up. If there is no link, it's just one over n. So this doesn't change with time. Yes? What if new web pages are created? Sorry? What if new web pages okay. Uh, how the, the question is what if the new web pages are created? Page rank is not computed once and frozen. Uh, what Google does, uh, it, when it computes the page rank, it computes it for whatever pages it crawlers discover. In the next round, right, the crawlers will do complete search of the internet. Uh, and update the database of all uh, <coughs> all pages, and then the page rank is uh, computed from scratch. So, what? Uh, um, uh, but between during the lifetime of a particular page rank vector, uh, we ignore uh, new pages. Uh, good. <coughs> So now, if I combine all of these, right, I can replace this with Q. Uh, what is this equal to? This is equal to Qt times, and here I'll have Q, uh, uh, Qt minus 1 uh, times, uh, 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 times G and so forth. So uh, what I get is that the Q, the probability distribution after, say, k many steps is simply equal, oops, uh, sorry, so this will be, um, I'm messing it up. So QP is uh, equal QT minus so I am having here, uh, this will be now um, equal to uh, Q T minus 1, right? 
um, times um, g times g, right? Because what do I have? I have uh, q t plus one equals q t times g. Then I have q t equals q t minus one times g. If I combine these two, I can replace this here, and I get, uh, uh, so this implies that uh, Q, I don't know why I keep writing it off, Q uh, T plus one is equal to Q T minus one times G times G. And if you keep unwinding this, uh, this will be become Q T minus two times G uh, cube. And uh, so forth. So at the end, we see the pattern here that QK is Q0 times uh, uh, G to the power K. Yes. <coughs> I, now, the crucial feature of, so to speak, well behaved. Uh, mark of chains is uh, that there will be exactly one special distribution, let's call it pi, that has the property that if you apply uh, pi and you make a transition from pi, you end up back with pi. Yeah? So the the property is uh, that there is only one, uh, precisely one uh, probability distribution that has the following property, right? So this is pi of one or pi of S1, state S1, <coughs> pi of state S2, and so forth, pi of state Sn. And then you consider the same states, right? And you consider probability to be in the state, uh, uh, so you consider probability to be in the state uh, uh, J after one translation. What does it mean? Well, this means uh, that uh, PJ will be sum of pi si times probability to transition from si to sj, right? And this is sum from one equals i equals one to n. And the claim is that there, you, there is a unique probability where this will be equal again pj. Yeah? So this is why this is called a stationary distribution. Right? And that's precisely the property that we wanted our page rank to have, that we derived. Right? We are looking for pi such that uh, <coughs> it's a, the eigenvector for the um, eigenvalue equal to 1. So what are Markov chains uh, that have this nice property? Well, uh, they have to satisfy remarkably only two properties. Uh, okay. Now, to explain the properties, we have to uh, introduce a little bit of, uh, we have to reduce, to show how to associate with the Markov chain a graph. So the corresponding graph of a Markov chain consists uh, with uh, states as uh, vertices, uh, right? And there is an edge between, uh, so here is some Si and here is some Sj, there is an edge between 
vertices i and j, the rate that edge, uh, edge, if and only, so uh, edge exists, if and only if uh, probability of uh, going from set uh, from the state SI into the state SJ is strictly positive. It is not zero. Right? <coughs> what would this uh, 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 graph look like for the page graph? <coughs> hmm? It will be complete graph, right? Because of this small probabilities. <coughs> so now, in a graph like this, uh, we say, uh, so we say that uh, Markov chain is irreducible if uh, the corresponding graph, let's call it uh, uh, gamma, if graph gamma is uh, strongly connected what does it mean that it is strongly connected it means that for any two vertices as i and as j there exists a directed path that starts with SI and ends with SJ. And of course, this has to be true because this has to hold for every two vertices. The same has to hold also for SJ uh, going to SI. Right? So clearly, page rank graph is strongly connected because, in fact, between any two vertices, you have a direct, you have a path that consists of only one edge, right? So the second property of uh, um, that Markov chain has to be, it has to be uh, aperiodic. So Markov chain is aperiodic. If uh, um, if the following, uh, if there is no state such that uh, every loop containing uh, that state is uh, of land divisible by a fixed number k. So graph satisfy this property that it's a periodic? No. If a graph is bipartite, uh, 
every closed loop must be divisible by what number? Even number, right? Because if it's bipartite <coughs> graph, if you start from one point to go back to that point, you must have made the even number of transitions. So bipartite graphs are example of periodic graphs, huh? right? Here, um, this is just generalized, so a gra graph is aperiodic. If there is no point, uh, so that every closed loop has to be divisible, say, by 17, any number, but fixed number, right? This is, uh, um, now, why is page rank aperiodic? Uh, is there a web page so that every loop is divisible by a certain fixed number? Is that possible? In fact, every page has loop of every possible length, right? So uh, clearly this is now the crucial theory, theorem of Markov chains is uh, that precisely that, that if Markov chain is irreducible, right? That what in our uh, intuition is irreducibility simply means there are no drafts, right? Because there has to be a path from every uh, vertex to every other vertex. So you remember if you have a trap, a bunch of web pages that are connected to each other, but they don't go out. Once you enter this, uh, obviously, there will be no path uh, from any point in the trap to an, uh, any other point outside the trap. So this is all very intuitive. Uh, yes? Um, um, there's no such that um, this is a very big thing. Please go around and around and around. Uh, so the, you mean for the page rank? Yeah, for page rank. For page rank, so what you know, page rank is co completely connected graph. So for page rank, take any point and uh, uh, say why is it not the case that all uh, all paths are of length divisible by 18? Well, simply because uh, I can make a path of length 19 if I want. Uh, well, it has yeah of length length 19. So it's not the case like in bipartite graph. In a bipartite graph, uh, you have to make even number of uh, transitions.